Hello, I have just relaunched my online shop, my website, to really communicate how I want to move forward with this print sales business. And so I thought what I would do is a little video that's inspired by something I've seen pop up each year over on Instagram, which is Meet the Maker. Now this, I believe, started as a way for people who sell on Etsy, you know, small businesses to show behind the scenes of who they are, what their business is, how they create. Um, and it's coordinated each year by a lady called Joanne Hawker. I'll link to her profile on Instagram in the description, but I believe that's where it started. And I wanted to be, I wanted to create this video inspired by what she is doing. Um, so essentially over on Instagram, it's a month long prompt challenge where each day includes a different insight into you as a creator the things you create and the journey you've been on as a business. Don't worry, I'm not gonna give you 30 separate videos about me as a business. <laughs> it is mostly gonna be this one, although I will say that there is a whole other section which I'll talk about later in this video, which I'm gonna turn into a separate video because I think, I think a lot of my viewers will like it. I think it's quite an interesting one for people who are watching this channel. Let's start with brand origin and all about you. Hello, if you're new here, I'm Holly and I am a photographic artist working with film, darkroom and uh, mixed media, cameraless photographic practices, experimental photography, that sort of thing. I am a mother of two small human beings and a very large canine. I'm a mature student at UEA. I finally narrowed my degree pathway down to a liberal arts degree where I'll be majoring in English literature. But being a liberal arts degree, I'll have the opportunity to take modules in a broad range of subjects across the humanities, arts and science schools. Um, and that really just does tickle my interdisciplinary nature. I have a second YouTube channel. It's called School of Holly and it's where I talk about books if you're interested in that sort of thing. I am a co-founder and one fifth of the team behind the Analog Spotlight, a group committed to supporting the growth of the analog photography industry and community in a way that offers fair representation and access. Uh, we held our launch event in May 2022. It was fabulous and we're now planning another for October 2023. Last year I published a book called Photography Through the Pandemic alongside Hamish and the 35mmc community blog. The book showcases the work and words of 50 photographers from around the world and how the pandemic influenced, affected and or hindered their photographic practice. Um, I'm the chairperson for a local early years setting, so I'm getting a front row seat to a lot of the politics and issues around the funding for settings, SEND and social services for young children, among other things. It's something I'd like to get more involved in and have been seeking opportunities to get more politically active in. On brand origin, during the pandemic, my like identity crisis really came to a head because I had sort of lost all my hobbies as a result of motherhood. I was also working in a job that I really didn't like. I was just sick to my stomach of it. And the pandemic really forced me to look at those things because it takes away all the sort of busyness of everyday life. It takes away the school run, the play dates, all of those things. Really just makes you realise that or at least made me realise that I was spending all day with my children. Once they were in bed, I was then preparing for the next day with the children, and then I was just sort of crashing out on the sofa and not doing anything. And it really just made me struggle, knowing that I'd be going back to a job, I was on maternity leave at the time, going back into a job that made me feel pretty rubbish about myself and that I didn't really care about. I was very lucky though to be able to uh, get some therapy, some very excellent therapy, that really helped me come back to art and creativity. I started by doing things like painting by numbers because I couldn't really plan anything. My mind was not into planning. So just like that therapeutic act of painting, but with someone else giving me the instructions was perfect and really just started me back on this path of creativity. Through that process, I became much more aware of my mental health, of the importance of creativity and community as well on us as human beings, really. It took a couple of years, but I eventually quit my job. My mental health was so bad that it was starting to affect my physical health. I spent a year kind of freelance. I've touched on this before. I set up my website originally as a photographer, but I never promoted myself as a photographer because I didn't really want to be a commercial photographer. I didn't want the pressure of like shooting somebody's wedding unless it was as like a backup shooter or like people just wanted the add-on of a film photographer and not a full photographer. So I never really promoted myself. I got a few um, admin based jobs, freelance, just helping small businesses do what they needed to do behind the scenes. 
but it wasn't really enough to tide me over. In the summer, last summer, I started looking at what my options are. I was like, this is not sustainable. This is not going to be how I can live going forward. I can't use this to pay my bills. Uh, and that's what made me look at university. And that's how I ended up back at university. And so this is where you find me now. It's been quite an emotional journey. Uh, but I feel like the decision to relaunch my art sales and to sort of pivot this channel from being a straight photography one into more of an art based one is the right direction for me. More on where I'm hoping to go with this later in the video. So the next prompts I'm tackling are learn trial and error and recharge. Something I am so guilty of and I think I may have mentioned it in my last video, maybe not, certainly mentioned it over on Instagram, is taking on too much and spreading myself too thin. It means that I never actually feel like I get anything done. I may well be getting stuff done, but I always feel like I'm coming up short, like I'm failing somebody or something, that I haven't done my best, that I'm just taking on too much, basically. So for instance, with my summer break from university being now, I officially handed in my last essay two weeks ago, maybe. I had this whole plan of things that I wanted to achieve over my break, and I just ended up getting so stressed out, so overwhelmed last month. For instance, I really wanted to commit to doing some video essays. It's something that I've been really interested in. I love watching other people's video essays. I like writing essays, and I really wanted to try and translate that into something for YouTube. Unfortunately, my brain is not in it. My brain needs a break. My brain needs a rest. And so that has not happened, but I've started to feel guilty because I haven't already delivered on the two video essays that I had kind of planned in my head and wanted to do. So the tough thing is that everything that I am doing, I feel very passionate about or I really enjoy. So like making YouTube videos, doing my art, doing the print sales, write, doing essays. I actually genuinely love doing essays, working on the analog spotlight, working as the chairperson for the nursery. Like I love all those things and I feel really passionate about them, but when you're taking on so much that it be you just end up not doing anything else and just slogging away at it takes all the joy out of it. So a learning process that I am on is just letting go of stuff, working out what actually needs to be delivered on, what is just my own self-imposed deadlines, self-imposed restrictions, and learning to live my life a bit more, learning to relax. Um, I've spent the last couple of weeks actually socialising with people. I've been going for sea swims with some friends. I'm even going out for cocktails tonight. Like, there's loads of lovely things that I'm now getting involved in, and it's making me feel more positive, making me feel more creative. I feel more inspired, and I want to work with that. I don't want to get myself to a point where every evening after the kids are in bed, I'm like, oh, I still have this, this, and this that I haven't done from my to-do list today. Like, that's not where I want to be. So I'm learning to relax a little bit more. Um, so this leads nicely into the next section, highs and lows and reality, because it's all entwined and linked. The reality of juggling all the things that I do means there's no normal week or day in my life. <laughs> Every day is different, particularly with parenting. Like, over the summer, I'm taking my youngest to forest school once a week. We have swimming lessons, which when I'm at university, I can't be involved in. So that's all changed. Obviously, when I'm at university, a lot of my day is spent at university, a lot less being working on my creative business. So everything changes. I usually try to plan out a month ahead. Like I sit down at the beginning of the month and I think about all the commitments we've got going on, what I can reasonably achieve. This is, this is an exercise in feeling like a failure because inevitably the week changes, something else comes up and I never get what I was supposed to get done. done. So I'm going to have to stop doing that. Obviously, to some extent, you need to know what's coming up, what you've got to get done. Like, say, with the Analog Spotlight event coming in October, there are so many things that have to be done by then that need to be done by certain dates. So there is stuff that has to be done, but I need to really, really learn to let go. So for me, a low is that I don't necessarily manage to deliver on all the things that I really want to deliver on. For instance, the video essays, that's something I really have wanted to do, but I just don't see myself managing that this summer. Hopefully at some point I will, because I really want to do it. <laughs> but they're gonna have to go on the back burner for now. But a real high is that now that I have started to let go, I am feeling energized, I feel creative, and I feel raring to go. So yeah, highs and lows and the reality of it. The reality of it is it's chaos. I am chaos. You can see from my creative space, I'm still chaos even though this is the tidy version. <laughs> so the next one is glow up and adapt. So I have given my print sales a glow up. My colour prints are now made by a new company. It's meant that I can actually technically reduce the price of my colour prints 
I have spent a lot more time working out how to do things like the borders and how to set them up properly for printing. So I feel like the quality is better than it was simply because I've learned how to deliver the artwork better. Before I was having them delivered through a drop shipping website, which meant that whilst I had chosen the paper and I was really happy with the paper, I wasn't seeing the prints before they were going out. But I didn't realize this was actually adding to the cost of it. It was super expensive. So I've now switched all that around. My new prints whilst still being absolutely stunning i'm so happy with the sort of like watercolor paper that they're on they are now 15 pounds per print although 10 percent off for the month of july because this is all in celebration of me relaunching yeah those are now 15 pounds a month and i actually get to see them i actually have them here i have them in stock and it means i can do craft shows which is the next thing that i'm planning on doing and i'm also hoping to get stocked in local galleries and cafes and things like that where they sell local artists work um, so that's now that my website is up and running that is the next step in my glow up of my print sales so the prints that i've launched with are just eight of my color prints plus five darkroom prints um, i will be adding more to this as we go through but i wanted to get first lot up because obviously it costs money to have the stock in it costs a lot of money <laughs> to, to have this this is why i was doing the drop shipping before because there's no upfront fee for me but Anywho, I am still considering selling the prints that I made through the other website, but it would be on a very different basis. Those are much higher quality. Those are more like if somebody wants to buy a full art print, this is the sort of thing that costs 60 to 70 pounds really to produce and, and make any money. I was making no money when I was selling them before. Let's be honest, I was making absolutely no money. So if I wanted to go down that route, they would have to be bigger, 60 to 70 pound prints on this exquisite paper. So I'm not sure whether I'm gonna go down that route yet, but we will see. I have taken a good look at my black and white prints. I've removed some of the ones that I had on my shop from the shop. I have some ideas of how I'd quite like to turn them into mixed media prints. And so that's what I'm gonna be working on behind the scenes. Also with my focus on selling in more local galleries, cafes and things, I'm going to be doing, once the weather cools down, <laughs> I'm gonna be working on local prints so prints around Munsley, Cromer, Yarmouth, Norwich around the Norfolk area and getting those ready for display and selling because I think that's probably the best strategy that doesn't mean that's all I'm ever going to print but I think that's going to be my next lot of prints which I'll take you on the journey of of course I will so yeah this is <laughs> this is the glow up this is me adapting to the new reality to this being a print sales focused thing and not Something that I forget about because I never promote myself so that's what was always the problem is that it was up on our shop, the shop was costing me money to run but I wasn't promoting it, I wasn't actually trying to make any headway with it so now I am. <laughs> so let's look at planning decision and coming soon and this is going to be the last section of this video. The, the section is going to be in a whole separate video, the prompts I really wanted to tackle but that would have made this video so long is creative space and tools and machines because I do want to show you around what I have going on in here. This is my creative space. Things like my enlarger, the different cameras I use, the film stocks I use. Yeah, so I do want to take you through that but that just started becoming a really long video. So that's gonna be the next one of these. It might not be the next video going up on this channel but that is gonna be the next one that I do taking you through all of that because I do think that's interesting to look at how people work. <laughs> Um, but for now, we are looking at planning decision and coming soon in terms of art. So given everything else that I've said in this video, you could say that I'm like anti-planning. I'm taking things off my list of things that I need to do, but I am honing in on what is absolutely necessary, what I really want to get done. So up until like today, it has been the website launch. I have been redesigning. I've been trying to teach myself how to design the website because Honestly, my website design skills are atrocious. <laughs> it's been so hard. Considering I feel like I'm a sufficient photographer, my I cannot do design. I, just beyond me. That's why it's a whole career in itself. So I mentioned that I am planning on doing some more prints in the future. I have loads of work that I would love to get turned into prints, but obviously I need to sell some first. I need to bring in some money. I need to cover the cost of what I've done so far, but I do have some more launches that I have in mind. What I'm trying to do though is make sure that my launches are not just, I like this print, I wanna put it up. I want things that work well together. So a lot of my prints in A5 size sit really nicely together as diptychs or triptychs, which is 
something I really love. So that's how I'm going to go forward. I want to be launching new products that can be a series that can work together that people could buy together and put on their walls like that's how i would love to do it and as i say i'm gonna be working in the darkroom on some local prints i do also have some ideas for some creative projects won't necessarily be for sale um but that i'm really looking forward to getting my teeth into and i will update you soon on those I also have some new printing techniques in mind that i would like to try so not just new ways of working with images that I have in my darkroom, but things, I'm not gonna mention them here in case they don't come to fruition. I don't wanna jinx myself, try like commit to something that's not gonna happen, but there are some other printing techniques that I would like to have a go at, uh, that I would love to share with you. So uh, watch this space for some other things coming. If I have time, I am going to be kind to myself because if there's a lesson in this, it's be kind to yourself, guys. <laughs> The final thing I want to mention is the book boxes because you may have noticed, or you may not, that the book boxes are not currently listed for sale on the website, despite the fact that when I did my creative goal setting earlier this year, I mentioned that the book boxes are one of my favourite things to come up with and make. And that is because I want to give those a glow up, I want to give those their own turn in the sun, um, I have some ideas of how to improve them. It's going to take some time. A few of them I'm just going to get rid of entirely. So one of the things with the last two book boxes that I delivered on, I was able to source new books um, and do um, a stock of five, five of each box. And that's something I want to work on. I want to have maybe five, maybe a bit more of each book, but have them be brand new books for you, books that I've absolutely loved. Whereas some of the earlier ones were based on secondhand books, books I've actually read, always in good condition, like I would never sell anything that was in terrible condition. But I'm gonna remove those like secondhand book ones and I'm gonna turn them into something new. I have some other ideas of things I might wanna put into those book boxes, but that's gonna take some time. And again, I'm being kind to myself, guys. <laughs> be kind. Um, so it's going to take a bit of time while I work out how I'm going to achieve that, whether I can achieve it within a reasonable cost and yeah. So yeah, that's another thing to watch this space for. They're not gone forever but they're gone for now. So thank you so much for all the support that you've given me so far. Everyone who's purchased the print in the past when it was much less of a <laughs> formal thing. Uh, everyone who purchased the book box, thank you so much. I'm like can't believe I've sent a couple of those to Norway, thank you. If you're watching this before the 31st of July, 2023, you can use the code WOOHOO10 to get 10% off 